What you're looking at there is this beautiful fish that's in the rivers of South Georgia. That's the short-nosed sturgeon. That's the living fossil. And I'm going to introduce you to somebody who's studying that living fossil and is the opposite of a living fossil, a bright young mind, Dr. Adam Fox. So good to be with you, Doc. Thanks. I appreciate you spending some time with us. We are in the tank with short-nosed sturgeons, two of them, in fact, right here with the Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources. And Dr. Fox is studying sturgeon. And Doc, what are some of the things that you are asking yourself, question-wise, on this federally endangered species? Sure. So short-nosed sturgeon um, were once targets of a really um, valuable fishery. Uh, they were harvested for their meat and their caviar. And that led to a major decline in their population. So uh, they were actually uh, listed as endangered on the first Endangered Species Act way back in the 1960s. Mm, okay. And unfortunately, their populations haven't really recovered uh, even though they've been protected from harvest. And so my work is looking at short-nosed sturgeon in all of Georgia's Atlantic Coast rivers, okay. and we're trying to figure out their abundance, how many there are, and um, maybe be able to look into some of the reasons why they're not recovering. It's interesting, and, and probably looking at things like how they're moving, their population dynamics, and those kinds of things? Yeah, so we're interested in recruitment, which is how many new sturgeon are coming into the population each year, how many are being born, okay. what their habitat is, so we do studies that track them as they move through the rivers and estuaries, and um, they'll also occasionally move out to the, uh, to the ocean and visit other rivers as well. And it's that harvesting, it's that kind of potentially erosion that got into the water that impacted this species that you're looking to do something about. So so yeah, um, eventually the goal is to have enough short-nosed sturgeon that they might one day support a fishery again. And so in order to do that, um, that recovery is going to be a very long time frame. But in order to do that, we need to know how they are doing now and what we can do um, to uh, help them recover. And that's something that I want the folks at home to know about is even in a school of forestry and natural resources, studying endangered species like these fish is incredible. Well, what I want to do, Doc, is in this next part, get a hold of one of these, bring one of these beauties out of the water and do some of the measurements on them that you're doing to show the folks at home some of the things a fisheries biologist does. So let's go there next. All right, so Mr. Sturgeon is out of the water and we want to do this kind of quick to prevent him from being overstressed. But Doc, what are we going to measure with this animal? So when we handle these fish, uh, we measure uh, mostly just their length so that we take two different length measurements. The first is total length. So that's from the tip of his snout to the tip of his tail. And so on this fish, that is uh, about 915 millimeters. And then we also take fork length, which is to the deepest part of the fork in his tail. Okay. Um, and so that is about um, 805 millimeters. We want to measure uh, two lengths because sometimes they're missing the tip of their tail. If a predator bites it off or a boat strike happens, um, we'll use their fork length. And we can use either of those lengths to uh, look at characteristics of the population, look at size structure, um, and estimate age as well, because they get bigger as they get older. Right, so about a three foot long fish. I'm holding this contraption, and Dr. Fox told me that I need to hold this button down, and I'm gonna run this up this sturgeon's body until it beeps. Up oh, there it went. And there is a number on this machine which tells us what, Doc? So this sturgeon has a microchip. Um, it's exactly like what you'd put in a pet cat or dog uh, so that it can be found if it gets lost. And so we tag our sturgeon so that uh, if we ever capture them again, we'll know who they are and we'll be able to figure out how much they've grown and where they've been, or at least where, they were, where they've moved from when they were caught to when they were recaught. That kind of population dynamic work is so important. And Doc, I wanna get him back in the water, but just thank him so much for what you're doing. And folks, this is an endangered species right in the rivers of South Georgia, incredible. Let's put him back and let's talk a little bit about what the folks at home can do to help. Let's go there next. All right, so Doc, I was looking at that fish up close, the beautiful mouth, the bottom feeder. I'm thinking about salmon that are traveling up a river or a stream. Would that animal be traveling to find food or what would it be migrating? I hear about migrating, why? Yeah. So short-nosed sturgeon make uh, really long migrations to spawning habitats. So the adults like to live in the lower rivers near the ocean, but they'll swim 100 miles upstream to find the right kind of habitat to lay their eggs 
and, uh, and then the juveniles will drift back down the river. So having that connected river ecosystem is really important for sturgeon. So that idea, as you're along a river, along the coastal plain of Georgia in the southeast, those rivers that lead to the ocean, these things, if you're standing there with your waders on fishing, could be lurking beneath you as you're fishing. If someone happens to find one, Dr. Fox and I were talking, there is a website and a number to call it Sturge, S-T-U-R-G, 911, that you can call if you happen to see one, see one in distress, great thing that you can do to help. Doc, I can't thank you enough. Thank you for today. Thanks, Dave. Thank you for the work that Dr. Fox is doing right here at UGA to help an endangered species. That's great stuff, a very efficient thing to do. So y'all know what to do. While you're online learning more about the short-nosed sturgeon, check out the Ranger Nick Facebook page and the Farm Monitor Facebook page and see what everybody's got going on. And until next time, for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick, reminding you, as I always do, that enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you right back here again, this time next month. See ya.